conventional fighter a kickboxing dinosaur. The weapon that defines Deinonychus is a slashing four-inch razor-sharp blade kept upright during walking or running, constantly caught, ready for a fight. This vicious claw can deliver 450 pounds of force and rotate almost 180 degrees. To eviscerate prey, Deinonychus uses both its hands and feet. These were animals that had weapons everywhere you go. A ridiculous amount of weaponry for an animal of its size. So clearly this is an animal has evolved for whatever reason to be able to um, dish out a lot of damage for its size. For a juvenile Sora Poseidon, even a juvenile the size of a polar bear, Deinonychus means trouble. And a whole pack of Deinonychus means a whole pack of trouble. It's hard to imagine how Sora Poseidon survive in a world where they face down savage killers all alone. But they do survive, grow up, and one day become almost indestructible. For Tyrannosaurus rex, the most advanced carnivore that has ever lived, the odds are even tougher. A T-Rex nest. The chicks are growing up fast. The female is far away, on a hunt trying to replenish her strength. The male stays behind to guard the roost. There's always this idyllic picture of this female Tyrannosaurus guarding her clutch of eggs. It may have been the male, as far as we know. I mean, the female could have said, buddy, you cause the problem, you take care of them. But the male needs to eat, too. A warm-blooded carnivore can't last for long without a meal. A scent travels on the breeze. An aroma his brain instantly recognizes. A triceratops, dead and rotting. Dinner just got one step closer. And the advantage of a carcass is that it can't fight back. There's this debate, uh, was T-Rex a scavenger or a predator? And the answer to that is it was both. Uh, any large animal needs to be able to find food on a regular basis. And these guys were warm-blooded. They needed to eat uh, frequently. But with both parents out searching for food, the nest is left unguarded. Exposed, danger lurks everywhere. Triceratops may be a plant eater, but with a defenseless baby T-Rex around, it'll make an exception. Quetzalcoatlus is the largest flying carnivore in Earth's history. It eats 10 pounds of flesh every day, nearly the weight of two hatchlings combined. To survive, these chicks will have to keep a very low profile. The male is on the trail of a meal. A Tyrannosaurus rex can pinpoint the exact location of an owner. Soon, he's headed straight for the dead Triceratops. The sense of smell was powerful in the T-Rex. The nerve that goes to the sense of smell is the biggest nerve in the dinosaur head. They could probably tell not just if there was a dinosaur that had walked past, they could be able to tell that that dinosaur walked past two and a half hours ago. T-Rex's nose, like a laser guidance system, leads him directly to his target. What these advanced senses do not tell him, though, is how his Triceratops died in the first place. The answer to that question is found in the mouth of another T-Rex. It turns out this predator's massive jaws with their bone-crushing teeth able to bite down with enough force to bend steel are just the beginning. It's quite likely that the teeth of carnivorous dinosaurs have rotting meat, little bits of it caught in their teeth, and therefore a lot of bacteria, and therefore an infectious bite. The bacteria would have given T-Rex permanent morning breath. There'd be many reasons you would not want to be around the mouth of a T-Rex, and smell would have been one of them. That bacteria means a bite. Any bite that draws blood can cause a life-threatening infection. 
Even if the animal managed to survive the wounds generated from the bite, the prey dinosaur would get weaker and sicker, and the predator could then hunt it down and kill it. Chomped by a T-Rex, and you're going down, be it now or later. And once you're down, Tyrannosaurus Rex will find you and eat you. The problem for this T-Rex is that the stench of rotting meat draws a crowd. And while a hungry adult male fights for his share of the spoils, his unguarded hatchlings wait for his return. All while a Quetzalcoatlus circles over him. Fifty million years before the first T-Rex walked the Earth, Sauroposeidon youngsters are already out on their own. Huge numbers hatch each year, but only three out of 10,000 will survive to adulthood. The most dangerous time is when they're smallest, the first few weeks. Their best defense is to get as big as they can as fast as they can. In order to grow very big, very fast, they do something that appears to break the most basic rules of biology. For the first few years, these plant eaters are meat eaters. Probably many of them were eating insects and small animals because it was a ready source of protein. Very many plant eating animals will also take animal prey when they can get them because it's an important source of nutrients that are really hard to get from plants. A young Sora Poseidon processes food in an entirely different way than an adult, digesting its food in the stomach and small intestine. It's a digestive process more akin to the carnivores it fears. And Sora Poseidon has another trick for growing to mammoth proportions, hollow bones. Its backbone, neck, and ribs have walls just a fraction of an inch thick. Even its limbs are far less dense than the bones of many mammals. So look at these big sauropods like Sora Poseidon. They're growing to 20, 30, 40, 50 tons, and they're doing it in the space of just two or three decades. Sauropods grow in spurts, depending on their age, the season, and the availability of food. We know this because their growth is recorded as rings, just like rings in a tree trunk. For the first few years of a Sauroposeidon's life, predators are at every turn. One of the most common, Deinonychus, is also one of the most deadly. Cunning, definitely cunning. Big brain, smart. It's the sort of creature that seems very adept for doing a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. Nasty. Uh, Deinonychus is a very, very nasty animal that, that uh, you know, you meet up with one of these and your chances of being disemboweled are pretty great. For something like Deinonychus, Sorposide would be a great meal. For the herbivore Sora Poseidon, death by Deinonychus is neither pleasant nor painless. It's a kill not unlike today's hyenas, one of the Serengeti's most effective predators. When hyenas bite through the gut of antelope, it just stops. It's functionally dead. While juveniles fight it out in the woodlands, adult Sora Poseidon are, as always, foraging for food. With their tiny brains, they live in a world of oblivion, seemingly unaware of the fate of their offspring. Tyrannosaurus rex, though, lives in an entirely different world. A male wolves down a triceratops carcass. Those powerful jaws smash into the meat of the animal. Those gigantic teeth pierce down through flesh. Uh, these well-rooted teeth are there to break into the bones. Scavenging keeps T-Rex alive. Maintaining strength is essential. His chicks are depending on him. Left alone, they are as vulnerable as a clutch of baby Sarah Poseidon. 
and a Quetzalcoatlus has a voracious appetite. Soaring at 10,000 feet, a sense of smell is useless. This flying reptile relies on its fantastic eyesight to scan for vulnerable youngsters on the ground. It could make the difference between a meal and no meal. It zeroes in on a target. A three-foot-long baby T-Rex appears on the radar. It's going to need to have fairly good distance vision in order to be able to see just generally where it's going and, and targets on the ground. This T-Rex is not a killer. Not yet. And these babies taste just as good as any other little dinosaurs that dot the landscape. They would have been just about the right size to be a snack for Quetzalcoatlus. Luckily, just as this massive flying reptile approaches the nest, the male senses trouble. His ultra-sensitive olfactory lobes pick up the distinctive scent of Quetzalcoatlus. This triggers a rush of chemicals to the brain and an immediate decision to return to the nest. But Quetzalcoatlus are fast, and it only takes a split second to launch their 400-pound body skyward. The other chicks might just make it for another generation. Dinosaurs ruled the Earth for millions of years. They grew to almost unimaginable sizes, adapted to extreme environments all over the globe. These animals were very successful and really uh, some of the crowning achievements of, 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 of evolution. And they do it all without much brain power. Dinosaurs didn't need to solve quadratic equations. They didn't need to play chess. They didn't need to learn how to build rockets that go to the moon. What they needed to do was do the things dinosaurs do. You really only need to be as smart or smarter than the animals that you're around. These are animals that need to respond to threats, be able to guard their young, uh, might need to be um, doting parents in many cases, might need to be able to find distant resources, but they don't necessarily need to comprehend philosophy. The armored dinosaurs in general, and Ankylosaurus is no exception here, were not bright dinosaurs. Probably one of the dumbest dinosaurs that ever lived. Their brains are really small for the size of their heads and their bodies. Dinosaurs have just one job, successfully operate the advanced machines that dino bodies have evolved into. And this is a job they do extremely well. They would have seen and smelled and heard the world in ways that far exceed what we're able to do. And in a way, that's a lot of brain power, just a different kind of brain power. For dinosaurs, brain power, carefully honed physical traits, and instinct itself all work together. The result, dinosaurs survived for over 165 million years. 800 times longer than we've been on the planet. They were on this planet for more than 100 million years, and you know these guys were very successful, and they only went out because of extraterrestrial causes. It took a meteor to wipe out the dinosaurs, a fact that speaks to their incredible staying power. With their magnificent bodies and tiny brains, Dinosaurs were success stories like no other creatures the planet has seen before or since, including 